out unto the Lord with triumph. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. How many, I'm going to ask this question again. How many are ready to go to another level? How many are not satisfied where you are, but you're ready to go higher? If you're ready to go higher, come on and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you're ready to go higher, come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Hallelujah. Oh, man, oh, man. Come on. I need to hear you a little bit more, a little bit more. Hallelujah. Let's shift this atmosphere a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This is the day. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord had made, and we're going to rejoice. We're going to celebrate. We're going to shout because we got the victory. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And we give him the praise. We give him the honor, and we give him the glory. Come on and put those hands together one more time for the Lord. 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 Oh, one more time, one more time, one more time. Oh, you don't know what's you don't know what's about to happen. You don't know what's about to happen. But I can feel that something is about to happen in this place today. Hallelujah. You just better tap in and give him the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and make a shout. Acceleration, raise your sound in this place. Y'all ready to go to a higher level? Yeah. I said, are you ready to go higher? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Woo. Put your hands together. We're going to sing a song by me. <laughs> it's called Higher Level. If you know you are surrounded by God, come on and raise it up. Front, back, side to side. Lord, I know you got me. You're down to right. On and on it goes. My son is calling me to a higher. Ooh, I'll always seek your face. I need you in my space. My blessings on the way. Nothing can stop my praise. I'll always hold your hand. You never let me fall. I'm going up to a yeah, yeah. I'm going up, going up. Gotta keep my eyes on you. Ooh, now I'm looking up. I love the things you promised me. It's so close, I can taste it. In my heart, I'm going up to a higher level. Front, back, side to side. Lord, I know you got me. You're out to ride. I'm my, my, my trip may look, look a little different. different. I'm moving, faith, not fear. Taking new strides, that's my mission. Lord, you covered me, and I have the confidence I need. Run back side to side. You're down to ride for me. Keep my eyes on you. Ooh, now I'm looking up at all the things you promised me. It's so close I can taste it. In my heart I think going up to a higher level. Ooh, ooh, ooh. God has our back. Oh, on and on it goes. My destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new me now operates by a 
new set of rules. Yeah, yeah. Front, back, side to side. Lord, I know you got me. Right for me. Oh, and on and on it goes. My destiny's calling. Higher level. Come on and raise your voice. Y'all ready to go to a higher level? you for our new territory anybody expecting an expansion <laughs> I'm looking for an expansion of territory if you know that God has already signed it he's already sealed it and we're waiting on the delivery anybody expecting something from God Woo! enlarge our territory oh God Hallelujah! Come on and put your hands together like this. We're going to bless the Lord. Yep. Come on and clap your hands. Yep. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. 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 Forever. 
everything you've done, for everything you're doing. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord, you're worthy. Whoa, 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 worthy. Whoa, 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 worthy. Whoa, 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 worthy. Say, hallelujah. 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 Come on and dance right there. Those of you 
got excited because I'm a praiser. Praise the Lord. So me and my sister Javon, we're up here. I'm over the outreach ministry. And just, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Amen. But we just come to celebrate on today. Our young people are going back to school this week. And we want to make sure that they have the things that they need. But more so, we want to make sure the teachers are equipped with the things that they need to make sure our children are safe. Amen. Amen. So we have items out in the front. And those that have brought items with you, please, please just put them back there when you have the opportunity. Just um, we are asking if you have a chance after service, we're going to have a table set up in the back for those that are willing to help us stuff those bags for our teachers. We have adopted Lockhart Middle School in this area. Amen. And we're going to be a blessing to them. So please help us be a blessing. We also have backpacks for the young people that do not have. If you know somebody that need a backpack. Amen. Come on. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen. It's a sacrifice when we get out, when we come out of our pockets to be a blessing to someone else. But it's a blessing to be an accelerator because everything we touch increase. Even our community increase. Our children education increase. Amen. See, I've been feeling this thing all week, Pastor. I feel like every time I spend a dollar in acceleration, my pockets increase. My bank account increase. My mindset increase. Because I am an accelerator. See, I don't be playing. I don't be playing. I don't be playing. I don't just be saying that. So you better become an accelerator for real. You better plant some accelerated seeds in the accelerated ground so you can get some accelerated blessings. Hallelujah. But I ain't come up here to preach. Hallelujah. I just got excited. So I'm going to turn it over to Javon because I'm excited to be a blessing to our community on today. So if you are willing to help us, we want to see you after service. Thank you, my sister. That was wonderful. Well, my name is Javon Williams, and I'm over in the education department. I want to just, thank you. I just want to take a moment to talk to our parents. So if you got a minute, you got your mobile devices, and if you want to take notes, or if you have something that you take notes with during Sunday service, I encourage you to take down these few notes. Um, I want to do a call in, re in response. When I say, don't fuss or moan, you say, just log on. Uh -oh. Don't fuss or moan. Just log on. Don't fuss or moan. Just log on. Don't fuss or moan. Just log on. How many of you know that Orange County and the surrounding counties have parent portals? I encourage every parent to make sure that you can access it. Nothing has happened because school starts Tuesday. You want to be on the go. You want to be ready before school starts. So I would encourage you today at the church to go and test. If you already have access from last year, test it to make sure it still works. Yeah. And if it don't, come call on Monday. Hey, yeah. my, um, my, my sign-on don't work. So don't fuss them on. Yeah. Exactly. Amen. How many of you used to watch wrestling back in the day. Oh, me too, me too, I loved it. Tag teaming was my favorite. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you come out and you tired and you tag your partner, oh yeah. That was my favorite. How about statistics say, when parents are involved in their children's classrooms, their students' performance hit double digit increases. How many did you know that? So. I'm, I'm encouraging the parents to tag team with their teachers. Yeah, yeah. So come Monday, you have to tag team with your teacher. So what I would encourage you to do, find a teacher or find teachers, yeah. depending on your students, and build a relationship with them. Start today, start this week. And one way you can build a relationship is by volunteering. Yeah. Volunteering in the classroom is the best way to build relationships. I am a firm believer. It worked for me. I had a situation, I'm going to be real quick. I had a situation with my daughter at Apopka High School. I tag team with one of her teachers, Mr. Peters. I love him to death. Still do. Love him to life. Well, Mr. something happened at school with my daughter. And 
I didn't know anything about it. I wasn't called on my job because they have all my numbers. They got my sister number. They got my brother-in-law number. They have everybody number. They may have some of yours. <laughs> I, I, I tag team. And in this particular situation, I, didn't, I wasn't made aware of it until after my daughter came home. And she shared with me because I do, from three to four, we have sit-down chit-chat. What happened in school, and you just can't tell me it was good. I need to know what was good about it. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Who did what? Who said what? What did you eat? All of that. So she told me of the situation that happened. So immediately, what you thought my response was? I grabbed my cell phone because I had all the after school hours number right. because I built relationships. Yeah. I tag team with those teachers. So what happened, she told me, she said, oh, mama, don't call him. Mr. Peters did this, 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 and this, and the principal did this, 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 and this. That was because I had built relationships. I didn't have to say a mumbling word. She, the teachers took care of it. So when I saw Mr. Peters at the football game, I gave him that nod. Everybody know what that nod mean in, the, you know, in our neighborhood. I gave him that nod. Everything all right with me? Everything all right with you? I kept on going. So that's why I'm telling you it's vital yeah, yeah, yeah. to build those relationships with your teachers. Okay, with teacher conferences. When, do you sh when should you start a teacher conference? When things are good or when things are bad? Good. It don't matter. You build a relationship and you set up those parent-teacher conferences. Now, the key word is parent-teacher yeah, yeah. conference. Yeah. It ain't teacher-parent. It ain't principal parent, yeah. it ain't principal teacher, it's parent teacher conference. You lead that meeting. Yeah, yeah. You call that meeting. So I encourage every parent to call their conference, right, I would normally say right at the first progress report because the earliest in statistics have shown the impact to your students is less when the changes are made early. Yeah. Don't wait to the first nine weeks or six weeks, what are we, we, we doing for the report card? Whatever, the first report card, do not wait. Let that progress report be your flag to see, are we all right, are we good? Yeah. Do I need to call somebody, do I need to talk to somebody? That is your right to do. I would encourage you to do it, use it, yeah. and you lead that meeting. Now, here it brings on to my next subject. Please, and I mean please, dress like you're handling business when you go to the yeah. teacher conferences. No, I, I mean that. We ain't having church, so don't come in your church finest with your church hat. We're not doing that. It's not first Sunday. I don't need you in all white. I don't need you like you coming from the club. You know, some of us do the club, not the club. That ain't the, that ain't the, the right. event for that. Yes, don't come with them shoes. Please, please do not come with a hair bonnet and slide. Please, please do not come with them hair bonnets or slides. I need you in the interview outfit. I need you, you are handling business. And you, your children are your business. So I need you to take care of business. So when you walk into that, that office on that school campus, I, they need to see you coming like, uh-oh, I can't play with her. I can't tell her anything. Cause she coming mean in business. Oh yeah, that's what I want you to do. So this entire year, I've given you tools to start the year off right. Yeah. If you do them, I guarantee you, you will have a successful year. Tag team. Okay. Thank you. Okay, daddies, daddies. You hear me, mic on? You hear me? Daddies, it's vital for you to be there before the mamas do. Because when they see you coming, oh, Lord, Daddy here. Oh, yeah. It's vital. So when those teachers call, you need to stop what you're doing and go see about what's going on. I can't tell you how important that is, honestly. So I've given you tools. Tag team with your teachers. Volunteers start this week. They need to know everybody's phone number. Okay? Conferences. Set them up, good or bad. Set them up and you lead that meeting. Yeah. And how you dress for your attire, business attire. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna end it with, if don't fuss them on, God bless you.
Hallelujah. Come on and just stand to your feet. We're going to worship. Jesus is enough. He's our everything. Everything that you need him to be, that's what he is. Amen. Amen. This song says, Jaira. It's new for us, but I love it.
forsake you then he'll take you up amen when I didn't have parents at a young age he was enough when I wasn't sure if lights was going to be on or off my brothers and sisters and I would play the game let's turn on the switch and see if they come on he was still enough 
Come on, when I left my small town to this big city of Orlando by myself not knowing how things were going to add up, he was still enough. Come on, I took my kids down Pine Hills Road. And I said, this is where mommy used to live my first semester of college. And I would ride the city bus. I had to stay with my cousins and sleep on their sofa, squeeze in their beds because I didn't have a place. He was still enough. Y'all say something. See, I'm talking to some people that weren't born with everything. When I had to learn the city bus system because I was from a small town where you just walk where you needed to go, I had to learn how to catch this link versus that link and what time. And I was on the bus and my kids said, Mama, you around strangers. I said, yes, but I was with God. He has always been enough. And because he's enough, there's always been a fighter inside of me. Come on, I'm a lioness. You can't keep a good God woman down. Come on. You can't keep a good God woman down. You can't keep a good God man down because he is a dog. Take me to the valley. I'll come back on top. Walk me through the fire. I'll come out right up everything because he's always been enough. Take everything I have. Give me two to three years. I'm going to get it all back because he's always been enough. Oh, come on. Can I get you to shout it like you mean it? Say he is. woman down. Y'all better shout if I'm not by myself. Come on, who's been down before? But God stepped in that way and he was all you needed. And you resurrected like Lazarus. You came up a crucifixion like Christ. Come on, I need somebody to shout. He is enough. Come on, you can't keep a good man down. I watched my husband go through a business But baby, I walked in my prayer room and I let the devil know you can't keep a God man down. He is enough. And God restored and multiplied more than what we lost. Can I talk to some people that's been evicted before? Can I talk to some people that's been denied before? Can I talk to some people that's been fired before? Can I talk to some people that's been rejected? by your family. Can I talk to some people that he walked out when you thought he was in love? Can I talk to some people that she turned her back on you after you gave her everything? I dare you to shout this morning. You can't keep a God man down. I dare the women to shout. You can't keep a God woman down. Why? Because he's enough. Come on and shout it in your winter season. He's enough. Come on and shout it in your summer season. He's enough. Come on and shout it in your drought. He's enough. Shout him in your prosperity. He's enough. Shout him in the state of confusion. He is enough. Woo! Take everything, but give me Jesus. When I was ready to take my life, can I tell you he'll go to the grave? When I had put the expiration date on my tombstone in my head, that I was born in 1990, and I made a decision one night that the tombstone will have a hyphen, and it would say, from 1980, to 1996 I saw it in my head I said I can't take this this pressure is too much mama dead daddy dead auntie dead grandma dead baby sister dead step see I walked through hell but when I was about I took the glass and I saw the tombstone reading 1980 to 1996 even when you've given up on you, 
even when you thrown in the tower I'm talking to somebody today listen to me when it seems like you can't take it anymore when it seems like everybody else is happy and you're going through depression I'm talking to three people two of you are in the room the Lord said the other one is online can I just minister to those three come on when you got to the point that you say I don't want to do life no more come on can I tell you that he'll go to the graveyard he will resurrect your dreams he will resuscitate your destiny he will reform your dreams he will give you a new identity why because all you need is God he is enough when I thought I did not have what I needed he stepped in he resuscitated my heart and he made me love again Woo. he called me like he called Lazarus he said Tekoa come forth some of y'all that had some Lazarus experiences Woo. can I encourage you this morning God is enough trust him wait on him pull on him talk to him confide in him repent to him pray to him include him allow him to direct you and you will see that everything you've been praying for all you need is one thing and that's called God come on and shout he is enough come on one more time say he is enough hallelujah oh we bless the Lord this morning oh we bless him 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 just like that he can turn a dead thing into a live thing just like that he can give you joy that's why the bible says joy cometh in the morning right snap of a finger he could do it come on and shout he's enough come on you may be seated i'm gonna get through this word because god gave it to me directly from the throne for you all and i gotta release it this morning hallelujah come on first let's bless the Lord for our students come on let's bless the Lord for our students our children our small kids have been released we have some fun activities for them out in the parking lot with the gaming truck and snow cones and music amen if I can get somebody to drop this air as far as it can go I walk through hell but I don't like being there huh I said I was born in 1980 somebody catch on please quickly and I got my dress down to my ankle so y'all know I'm saved in long sleeves in the hot summer of James I just need a little bit of air it helped me out hallelujah and so we bless the Lord for the children they're out playing amen once I conclude my sermon we're gonna bring all the children up to pray over them is that okay and if you work in the school system, we want to pray over you. We know you all just combated a very tumultuous year, and God had his hands on you. Come on, say he is enough. Our children made it out, amen, safely. Amen. We didn't lose one child. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. Amen. And I believe in the anointing of oil. Amen. So we're going to anoint every child. So I want my prayer team to be on post because I probably have you all help me anoint them. The oil is anointed. I don't have to lay hands if I don't get directly to them, but the oil has been prayed over. Amen. Mama came over to me while I was worshiping. Amen. And she said, I come wait to the end, baby. Stand up. She called me. She said, I have. I've been diagnosed. I don't want to give her business, but it was concerning her mobility. I said, let me get you some oil. Amen. I got her a bottle of consecrated oil. I said, rub down because I believe in the power of the connection and the oil of God. When something's been consecrated and prayed over, amen. The Bible says when someone is sick, send for the elders huh, and anoint them with oil. Amen. And she ran over. She said, baby, look at me. And she started moving. She said, since I've been anointing myself, she said, I can move these joints. Come on, move for us, mama. Hallelujah. She said, that oil got power on it. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, God. And so we're going to take that oil. We're going to anoint our children. Whether they wear masks or not, they got Jesus. Rather they, come on, rather the government knows what to do or not, we already got the answer. Say, he's enough. I've been using the blood. And the blood has not lost its power yet. 
And so we're going to pray over these babies. We're going to anoint them. We don't play with the devil. Come on, we tell them where to go, how to get there, and where stage exit is. We're going to anoint our children with oil. Amen. I want to also pray over the teachers, educators, those that work in the school system. So at the conclusion of the sermon, I'm going to have everyone come up to the altar. I'm going to have my prayer team to help me. We're going to anoint everyone so that as you go into the school year, you'll be covered under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Those of you that are watching online, amen, we're praying for you and we extend our grace and our prayer to you as well. Amen. We take some time to celebrate back to school because it's important that we teach our children discipline. I loved everything Javon said when she stood up here. My, as you all know, she's my sister. She's also the director of education. I watched her as she reared her children and she did not play. You know, her daughter, her son was active in football and cheerleading and I would go to the cheerleading banquet and every year <laughs> her daughter was the cheerleader but she would get the awards every year they would give her an award because she as she said was very active and making sure staff knew who she was and she worked a full-time job so there's no excuse it can be done amen I don't know about you but I drop off donuts periodically to the teachers. I don't just show up when I have an attitude, but I show them a little bit of love. Amen. I find out what are the teachers like and don't like. Amen. Come on. It'll go a long way. A box of donuts for a dollar and 50 cent will go a long ways. So when I need something, I'm going to say, no, 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 we got it. We know Maximus. We know Bella. And like she said, walking there like you own some, I make sure I have my red bottoms. When I walk. They say, oh, you always have on heels. I say, yeah, babe, I'm probably leaving a meeting. <laughs> Because I'm a businesswoman. <laughs> I understand. So it's important. Everything she told you was important at the church. You all know we are very focused on faith and works. You can believe God for your children to do well in school. But you also got to do some work. Amen. And if you don't know all the curriculum and how to teach them, get in partnership with those teachers and those team members so they can help your children. It goes a long ways. And so today we set aside time to pray over our children. We set aside time to give you tips as Javon did. We take out time to give back as Cherie shared with you all because we're connected to the education process. It teaches children discipline. Say discipline. It also teaches them how to prepare. You can have big dreams, but you got to teach your children how to prepare for them. Amen. If you don't lay that foundation now, they will run from work. If you don't lay that foundation today, they will run from work. And the Bible says a man don't work. Oh, y'all know scripture. Come on, if you want them to be able to eat and provide for themselves and their family, teach them now. There's two things children should not have an excuse for, and that's church and school. Amen. It teaches them discipline. It teaches them how to prepare for the future. Amen. Now, we're going to pray over the kids after, amen, um, the sermon. And so I just need about 20 minutes on the clock, probably even less than that. If you can give me 20 minutes, if somebody can let Children's Church know to bring the kids back in in 20 minutes, amen, because after the sermon, I want us to go right into prayer for our children, amen. We get excited about the school year yesterday or day before yesterday, Friday. Um, we always take our kids out to lunch. We let them choose the restaurant take them out to lunch and we celebrate the school year then we take them to go school shopping so we make it a big thing and we were sitting at the lunch ta at the table eating lunch and so I said Maximus and Bella what are you all excited about this school year what are you looking forward to and Maximus said oh mom I'm looking forward to I like science and I want to hang out with my friends and I can't wait to go to the playground I said, okay, good. I said, Bella, what you looking forward to? She said, Mama, I'm looking forward to playing with my friends at lunch. <laughs> I said, Lord, that's my child. <laughs> she got it on us. Amen. But we get them excited about school. And I want you all to understand that if you get them to fall in love with education, you would get them to fall in love with discipline, order, come on, and preparation. Those are tools that will help them throughout their life. And so I proceeded to say, let me kind of reform my question. So what are you looking forward to learn in school this year? And I said, we are poories. We only bring home what letter? They said A's. Y'all got to set that standard. Your last name got to have weight on it. 
come on, you're building legacy. And I said, if you need help with school, what do you do? They said, we ask for help. I say, how do you be successful? We work hard. Start teaching your kids and saying those things. You all are doing a great job. I'm just re-emphasizing things that's going to set your children up because legacy is one of our pillars at the church. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and get into the word of God. Put 20 minutes on the clock for me. Please let Children's Church know to bring the babies back in in 20 minutes so we can pray over them. Prayer team, please be ready and prayed up because I want to anoint every single child and every teacher. Amen. Hold up your Bible if it's on your phone or if you have an actual Bible in your hand. Just hold it up and let's read our declaration out loud. You read out loud. It's on the screen. Amen. Go ahead. Stay standing for the reading of the word of God. It's custom at our church that we stand, we read. I'm going to read for you Acts chapter 16, <clears throat> verses 20 through 26. We're reading the English Standard Version for your understanding, and it reads, And when they had brought them to magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly was a great earthquake. So the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors, say all the doors, were opened. And everyone's bounds were unfastened. You may be seated now. Amen. As we dive into this text. I want to teach this morning. A little bit about doors and as I was in prayer and, and spending time with God and amen I heard so clearly amen a prophetic word that he had for amen my home and this house those of you that are online those of you that are in the in the building I want you to get your mind and your heart in position right now for what God is about to speak I want you to hear me so clear. Just like I sat my kids down on yesterday or day before yesterday, got them excited about school because I know that school is for their betterment. I want you to get excited today about this prophetic word that's going to be released because it's for the betterment of your good. If you hear me, please don't lose sight of this. This is a prophetic word from heaven. And what God spoke, it is up to you to grab what God is about to speak as he spoke through me. It's you to grab hold to it amen believe it and walk it out because we're about to see God do some mighty things in this season we have entered 2021 I told you all in the beginning that cumulative when you put those numbers together it means the number five we are in a season of grace and unmerited favor and if you hear what God is saying you will close out this year in a different place than you are right now and I don't know about you but when the word comes because I've seen God consistently speak and consistently be true to his word when he speak a word I get in position to receive it and I do everything I have to do to line up with that word because I don't want to miss my opportunity I've seen people around me grow and I've seen people around me diminish I've seen people around me go high and I've seen people around me go low let me tell you something it is those that obey the word of God that experiences the glory of God that experience the manifestation of God God. And so it's important that we understand that when God speaks, it's okay, baby, a prophetic word, we have to grab hold to it. I'm getting you ready for what's about to come forth. I'm talking to you all this morning about doors. I adjusted it. My baby's so on point. Thank you, baby. He done, he did this number right here, honey. They went running. I love him so much. Amen. But I got, I think I got it now. I think I got it. My earpiece was moving. Listen, everybody 
in their life will face closed doors. If you haven't yet, live a little bit longer. Everybody will experience closed doors. Everybody will face it. You may experience doors closed for a job opportunity. After you nailed that interview, you looked good, you said everything, you thought you had the job, and the door slammed closed. You may have been someone they picked out for a promotion, and right when you thought you were going to be the one picked, the door closed, and they picked somebody else. Some of you may have been on a job or on a career path, and the door closed because you were laid off during the pandemic. Or there may be others that were fired, and the door closed. Everybody will experience closed doors. You may have experienced closed doors in a relationship. You were right there almost at the altar, and somehow, some way, you had to call off the engagement. Or you may have been in a marriage, and the door closed, and now you're no longer together. You may have applied for a loan, and when you got there thinking you would be approved, the door closed. So everybody, some part in your life, you will experience closed doors. But I'm here to encourage you this morning and to let you know that according to the Word of God and according to the character of God, it doesn't matter if the door are shut. It doesn't matter if the doors are closed. It doesn't matter if the doors are locked. And it really doesn't matter if they're guarded by somebody. God has a way of opening doors that are necessary for your next level. I don't care if they're slammed shut. I don't care if somebody's guarding them. I don't care if the key has been thrown out. God has a way of opening closed doors. It's important that we understand doors because we all need doors. In fact, we can't live without them. Everybody needs doors to be opened in their life. Doors are the portal to another season. Doors are a portal to new opportunities. Come on. If you open doors are an opportunity for new assignments. Open doors are for new opportunities of success, new opportunities of identity. Every time I've gone higher, it's because of a door that I had to walk through. Can I tell you, sometimes I was nervous to walk through those doors. Sometimes I wasn't sure what was on the other side, but I had to walk through the door nevertheless to get myself to another side. I said earlier, I walked out of a door of a small town, small neighborhood, and to the door of a big city that I didn't know nothing about. Uh, come on, I walked out of high school into the door of college. Uh, I walked out of singleness into the door of marriage. Uh, come on, I walked out being a minister into the door of pastoring. Every door operates for you to have a new opportunity. If you're locked behind a closed door, you are literally incarcerated. If there's a door that God is trying to open for you, if there's a door that God has opened for you, but you're standing behind a closed door, you're only existing, you're not truly living. If you're standing behind a closed door and God is saying, but baby, I got another door for you. I just need you to walk through. But you're standing and you're staring at a closed door. You'll never see the open door. See, some of you doors were closed and it left you in that situation. And so now you are afraid to walk through that next door. And God is saying this morning, I have opened some doors for you. And I need you to get from behind the closed door and step into the open door. Because the open door will give you new opportunities. Opportunities. What the enemy tries to do is to get you stay stuck behind the door that was closed. Some of you got phenomenal business ideas, but a door closed on the old business. And so instead of you walking through the new door that's open, you're still standing behind the door that was closed 10 years ago. And God is saying, I'm trying to get you into a new decade because in this season, the door is going to fly open. In this season, you're going to be blessed. In this season, the business is going to prosper. Come on, say open doors are for new opportunities. And God has some new opportunities that he's yet for you to walk into. Now, I want to show you something this morning. Musicians, I need you all to help me out. There's different types of doors. Listen to this. There's different types of doors. I'm going to share with you three types of doors this morning. And as God revealed this to me, I said, wow. The type of door that you are in front of 
determines the season that you are in. I want you to say that the door that I'm standing in front of, or I'm sorry, the type of door I'm standing in front of reveals the season that I'm in. Now, I said God has doors available to you, but there's different types of doors. Some of you may be in one season versus another. Come on, I want to show you three types of, of doors. There's a door back here. This door is shut. Can you all see the door? Now, depending on the season that you're in is how you open the door. Some of you may be in a season where the door can't open unless you knock. So there's a type of door, I need y'all to help me out, that will not open unless you knock on it. That type of door is owned and accessed by somebody else. So if you're in a season where the door can't open unless you knock, and somebody else opens it, what is God saying? You are in a season where you're depending on somebody else. It could be your supervisor. It could be your spouse. It could be your parents. But you're in a season where you can't truly step into that door because you got to knock until someone hears you and then they're opening. See, some of you have experienced this before where it took you making noise for them to open the door. I've been invited to speak at conferences and they'll say, oh, you're so sweet. Can you kind of do our breakout session on Saturday morning when nobody really here? Because the door was not open yet for me to be the keynote speaker. But all I had to do was make some noise. Once they heard the oracle of God show up, once they heard the power of God, then they said, oh my gosh, let's open this door for the keynote speaker. Can you come back next year? Can you be the headliner? See, some of you are in a season where you just got to make some noise. I dare you right now to open your mouth and make some noise. Doesn't mean you ain't good enough. Doesn't mean you're not qualified. Doesn't mean you're not talented. I'm the same preacher I was that Saturday. But this year they say we need you to be the headliner. All I had to do was make some noise. You the sing singer. You're the same author. You're the same baker. You're the same minister, but you got to open your mouth and make some noise. God is saying some of you are in that season where he's saying make some noise and the doors will fly open. Come on and shout hallelujah. I need some keys, my keys. So there are some doors you got to knock and you have to wait for somebody else to open the door. Some of you are waiting for your mentors to make the connection. Oh, I feel God. Some of you are waiting for your bosses to tap you on the shoulder and say, come into the C-suite. Some of you are waiting for the bank to say you've been approved for the loan. Some of you are in a season where the door, in order for you to get through, it is controlled by somebody else. There's a second type of door that require keys. See, some of you are in a season where you have access. They heard your voice. You made some noise. Now you got access. But God told me to tell you that this type of door requires a particular type of season. See, even though you have access, in order to open the door, it still requires work. See, some of you have passed the season where you had to knock on the door. Now, God is saying you have the key, but when you got the key, you got relaxed. Because even though you have the key in your hand, baby, you still got to do the work. Come on, say faith in works. So there's a type of door that you have access to that's owned by you, but you still got to do some work to get in there and once you do the work the door comes open <laughs> see you are you're 
able to determine what season you are in based on the type of door you're standing in front of. Can I tell you what God told me the other day when I was in prayer? He said, there are some doors you got to knock. There are some doors you got to use a key. There's other doors that will just open automatically because you showed up. Don't take a knock and don't take a key. All you got to do is show up, baby, and the doors will automatically open. God says he's shifting your season from making noise and knocking and waiting for somebody else. He's shifting your season from doing extra work. That in this season, all you got to do is show up. ain't no season this is a time because when you say season that means it's gonna change I'm in my best health my best wealth my best mental state my best joy and every time I see the enemy tries to come in and shift my season I say the devil is a liar this is my time and I heard the Lord say Baby girl, you did the work. There were seasons that you knocked down doors, not just for you, but those that were following you. You had to kick down some doors that they said you weren't qualified for, and you had to wait for somebody else to open it. He said, baby girl, I saw you doing the work. Come on, I'm talking to you men. I'm talking to you women. He seen you do the work. He seen you make the noise. He seen you gave the extra. And God said, now it feels good because the work has decreased just a little bit. But the Bible says in Revelation 3 and 8, I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door. All you got to do is show up and the door is going to open. Come on in the book of Revelations. He said, I saw the seed you sowed. I saw the hours of prayer, man. If God lift your hands, Odell. He saw the seed. He saw the prayers. And he said, now you have been through a season of automatic doors. The word of God says, I know your works. Behold, I've set before you, you better shout it loud, uh, an open door, which no one is able to shut. Here's the thing about automatic doors. Oh, I'm about to close. I feel God. I got about two more minutes. Can y'all help me? Two more minutes. I got to get this out. Here's the thing about open doors. When they are automatic, oh, I feel God. When you're in a season of automatic doors, it's in the word. <sighs> when you show up, see the automatic doors don't move unless you show up. And God said, tell you this morning, he's waiting. 
the door is there. Why have you not went to apply for that bank application? Why have you not opened the pen to write the book? Why have you not recorded the song? Why have you not went and take your food for the CEO to taste it? Why did you apply for that job? Why are you not at church? He said, I need you to show up because the only way an automatic door will open is that you show up. And when you show up, the door closes behind you because he said, when I open the door, no man, when I shut a door, no man can open it. That means he shut the door behind my pass. He shut the door behind my naysayers. He shut the door behind my haters. All you got to do is show up. Every other door required you to do the work. But he said in this season, oh, I feel God. See, knocking open doors, keys open doors. But when God opens a door, who no man can shut it. Who God? See, with automatic doors, do you see who's operating it? With the door that you knock on, you see who's operating because somebody has to open that door. Doors that you have access to, you know who opens it, it's you. See, there's been seasons in your life where somebody else had to open the door. There's been seasons in your life where you opened that door. But God is saying in this season, he said, you're not going to be able to see the hands that opens the door. But you got to understand that you may not know the door and how it was opened, but you know who hand opened the door. And when you know it was God, you better walk that thing out by faith that because God opened it, nobody can shut it. See, that's the difference in automatic doors. You may not know who controls it, but you know who hands it in. I dare you with the next 30 seconds I have on the clock to open your mouth and prophesy. This is my time of automatic doors. And what God is about to open, can't no devil, can't no hater, can't no naysayer, can't no witch close that door. You see me growing, but you can't shut the door. Open your mouth and say automatic door. People get mad when they see you elevating. They get mad when they see you growing. But where were they when you were knocking on the door? Where were they when you knocked all night long? In your prayer room, Jesus, open this door. Jesus, open this door. Where were they when you understood the keys to the kingdom and you stopped begging and you start demanding? When you got the revelation that I have the keys to unlock doors. Where were they when you were speaking in tongues and showing up at church and volunteering and doing the work? Baby, you can't get mad that all I gotta do is show up very properly and the doors just open. God is about to take you places that people are gonna know your name. They're gonna say, no, 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 no. You don't sit in the back, baby. You gotta come all the way up to the front, you VIP. Because God is about to open some automatic doors. And all you gotta do is shake off the spirit of fear, shake it off and show up. He said, if you show up, I'll open the door. I prophesy over this house that this is our time that this is our time for automatic doors see that's what acceleration is all about it takes time 
to open doors that require keys but the anointing of acceleration allows what take minutes to open in seconds and you can't see the hand but we're teaching you today that as the door open give God the glory that as the door flies open give God the praise that as the doors move automatically say thank you Jesus I know that was you it was not me shake off fear and this is your assignment show up don't let somebody else show up where you were supposed to be and then you get mad it's time to come back to church I don't care what government is saying we know the tactics of the enemy baby you better show up don't be missing on the roll call I'm talking to you you all when that job or that position I believe there are CEOs in the room I won't come off of it some of you are directors but God said go for the next level I believe there's real estate owners in this room my husband and I we saw some property we gonna have to fly out of the country to go look at it. he said baby let's go do it let's just walk around the territory and God will show us what land to buy all we gotta do is show up come on there's some land for you to purchase come on there's some books that need to be published there are some franchises that need to be owned by you come on there's some people in the hospital room that all you gotta do is help go volunteer one hour a week and I'm just gonna show up and lay hands and pray and believe God and those that should have been dead are gonna resurrect can you show up automatic doors and I'm closing as a prophet of the Lord I take my call very seriously I go into quiet places Vanita was trying to text me yesterday I didn't know it until the next morning give me something soft I said you already know Benita I don't turn on my phone when I gotta preach I shut in because I gotta hear directly from the Lord because when he called me to prophesy he didn't just call me to be a prophet he called me to be a woman of integrity that when I speak it you can be confident that I heard it from God I am confident this morning to let you know God said we're entering a time of automatic doors we're in the month of new beginnings doors open new opportunities some of you are about to be around some tables that you used to be nervous to sit at some of you are gonna be the only minorities at the table because he said these doors gotta be open so others can follow this is our time shout it this is my time of automatic doors I want to talk today I've given you the prophetic word I'm done now I got to move forward with my assignment those of you that are on watching online those of you that are in the room go ahead and grab my babies they should be in here by now there's another door that no matter what season you're in it will always open automatically John 10 and 9 says I am the door if anyone enters by me he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture can I talk about the door that's called Jehovah the door of salvation salvation is an automatic door that leads you right to Christ that door will always open for you I don't care how you smell I don't care how dirty you are I don't care what sin you committed to he said there's an automatic door that's called salvation that when you show up he said I am the door I'm the way I'm the truth I'm the light I'm talking to those today that need salvation come on everybody should be standing and if you're already saved I need you interceding for those that are not both online and in the building I cannot teach you about automatic doors to success and automatic doors to good health and automatic doors to a deeper place in God if I do not introduce you 
to the door that's called Jesus. Can I tell you, I don't care what that preacher said. I don't care what that family member said. The automatic door that will always open to you is the door of salvation. Jesus died so he can clean you up. I don't care what you could have just smoked some weed. You may have been at a club last night in somebody else's bed. Honey, this door was still open for you. He said, I come for the least of them. Not for the most holy. I say it all the time and I say it again. My mother said, you don't take clean clothes to the washing machine. He wants you as you are. And he said, if you come to this door, just like you saw in the video, it will automatically open and it will close to your past. I want you to know this morning, the Lord loves you. He's knocking right now on your door so that you can walk through his. All eyes closed. If I'm talking to you today and you're ready to walk through the automatic door of Jesus Christ, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to tell you to come out your seat. I just want to pray for you. Can I pray for you? Come on, if that's you, lift your hands. I don't care if you've been saved before and you backslid. Come on, I see one hand. I see two hands. Come on, I see three hands. Amen. I see you in the back, brother. You got your hand lifted high. All eyes closed. Come on, I see three hands. Come on, lift your hands so I can pray for you. I see one of my ba I see my babies. I see my teenagers. Come on, their hands are lifted. Come on and give God praise. Come on, I see a fourth hand in the back. I see you, brother. Come on, you may have gone astray, but he said, this door is automatic. He said, I'll never I'm going to close my arms to you. I will take you as you are. And those that have your hand lifted, can I pray over you? Father, I thank you this morning that there is a door that is automatically open to those that confess Jesus Christ as Lord. And God, I ask that you will clean them up. Wash them, Father. Make them whole again. That they will be who you designed them to be. As they walk through this door, Father, open it automatically and close the door to their past that they will be saved in Jesus name I saw about six adult hands and I saw about about seven children and youth hand can you all just repeat after me say Lord forgive me for my sin I repent today I denounce any other God and Satan as my Lord See, when you don't choose someone, you're serving others. But today, I choose Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that Jesus died and rose again on the third day for my salvation. And today, I partake in salvation. Oh, come on and say amen and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and give God praise for the new souls. Come on and give God praise. Y'all can do better than that. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him praise. Woo, we bless you, God. Prayer warriors, come and put a line behind my babies. Y'all come close, come close, come close, come close. Let me get my oil. Prayer warriors, make a line. Lift your hands, prayer warriors, so I can see you. Come close, come close, baby. Will you join me, please, as we pray over our students? I'm going to ask Pastor Dio to lead the prayer. While he's leading the prayer, I want me and the prayer warriors to start laying hands, okay? Get them some oil, Bonita. Prayer warriors, lift your hands. I see Crystal. I see Cherie. I see Latasha. I see Dion. Come on. I see Daisy. I see Wanda. Come on, Olive. Come on, Victor. Can I get some of our praying men? Come on, Jarvis. Come pray over our babies. Come on. We rebuke everything that tries to come against and stop them. We come against it now, Pastor, if you would pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for every child, every student in this building, and even those who are watching online. I thank you, Father, for you covering their minds, that as they start this school year, that this would be the most incredible school year yet. 
I thank you, Father, for amazing relationships with the teachers and the teachers loving them. And I thank you for their friends, God, their friends being connected with one another and showing love. We come against any kind of bullying in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, that you're covering them from the north, south, east, and west. I thank you, God, for mindsets that are strong, for mindsets that are powerful. We thank you, God, for confidence that these little accelerators are confident that every time they walk into the room in the classroom that they know exactly who they are and more importantly they know whose they are because they belong to you Jesus Christ I thank you for what you're doing in their lives I thank you for the leadership that you're developing in them I thank you God for the for the power and the understanding that you're giving them that God as they go into their mathematics class if they go into their science classes God the STEM classes that they go into the social studies the recess that every class that they step into everything that they put their hands on they are going to succeed at it I thank you God for you making these little accelerators just that that God everything they touch increases that their blessings are moving at an accelerated speed and that you are surrounding favor all around them father I pray for a supernatural miraculous year this year I thank you God as they come back into school that Lord they're gonna feel the love they're gonna sense the love and God they're not gonna have any blockages they're not gonna have any situations or circumstances that want to hinder their growth I pray father God from the young to the old God whether they're in elementary school whether they're in middle school or that they're in high school God I thank you that even as the word said today that doors are gonna begin to fly open for them that doors are gonna fly open they walk out to campus and doors are just opening God I thank you for young millionaires in the name of Jesus Christ that businesses will be established at a young age that mindsets will be broken at a young age that generational curses are being broken in the name of Jesus Christ the next generation of leaders the next generation of powerful leaders leading this country I thank you for the doctors I thank you for the lawyers I thank you for the scientists I thank you for the professional athletes I thank you God for what you're doing in this house bless them like never before in the name of Jesus Christ can I get all thank you so much come on and give God praise for our babies come on and give God praise for our babies they're protected they're covered under the blood of Jesus they are prayed over they're covered we thank you Lord if we could I want Lakeisha get all their names and phone numbers I want to keep praying over them I want to put their names in my prayer closet Latasha come come on come on the stage Latasha Bolden Come on, take our babies. They can go and enjoy. Amen. Get their name and their phone number. Can I get every teacher, every person that works in the school system? Amen. Come now. If you work in the school system, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. If you work in the school system, come on. You're going to pray. Come on. You work over our children. Come on. Hey, God bless you, sir. Good to see you. Come on. Make a straight line. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Make a straight line. You work with the children. You work with the children. Latasha, amen. Powerful woman of God that works in the school system. She's going to allow God to use her prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you, God. We honor you today, God. Oh, God, we pull on you now, Jesus, for you are more than enough. God, you see every teacher lined up on this stage, God. They need you, God. I pray that your Holy Ghost fire run down each and every teacher, each and every faculty member, each and every staff, oh God, that you may have your way in their lives, that they'll speak the word of God, that they'll teach boldly, oh God, that your Holy Ghost will bring you, Father, in their lives, oh God. I pray over every school that is represented here now, God, that you will have your way. I come again fully. I come again to so Way. Give him the 
new year, God. 180 days. Have your way, oh God. In the name of Jesus, you show up in every classroom. Even now, God, your angel said, God, now, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Have your way. We declare and we decree that this school year will be blessed. Supernatural favor over every faculty member. In the name of Jesus, supernatural learning, supernatural teachers, their souls will increase, their lives will be blessed. We thank you for promotions in leadership. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, touch every last one of them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you reign this year as God. Reign this year as God. Jesus, you be glorified. You get all the glory. You get all the honor. You get all the glory, Jesus. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Oh God, we trust you. We trust you, Jesus. We trust you, yes, God. We give you a yes. For this school year, oh God, we give you a yes. We'll follow your way. We'll follow your way, God. In the name of Jesus, for you are the truth, you're the life, you're the way, oh God, and we trust you in Jesus' name. Come on and shout amen. Come on, say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Put Jesus on it. He said put Jesus on it. All you got to do is say the name. He's going to do the work. He said put Jesus on it. Come on and shout Jesus. Come on and shout Jesus. We didn't pray over you. Lift your hands. You've already experienced acceleration before the school year started. He said, get ready for acceleration all school year long. He said, the enemy tried to push you out, but you stayed. You grabbed your grips. You buckled your knees. And you said, I won't be moved. God said he's putting everything in order for you. He said, even acceleration in your marriage. He said he's putting everything, hear God, in order. In the name of Jesus, come on and get your offering ready. Come on, get your offering ready. Come on, we're going to sow seed in this anointing. Come on, we're going to sow seed in this anointing. Come on, God has already told one of you to give a thousand. I hear another 700. Come on, sow seed in this anointing. And right on your seed, I'll I don't want to rush this. God is talking to some of you. Even as I was preaching, as I talked about, there has been some that have knocked, some that have used keys, some that have seed in the ground. You want that word, Revelation 3 and 8. 
you want that to be your testimony, put seed in the ground. Come on. He said, because of your good deeds, I'm opening doors. Come on, it's not too late. Put your seed in the ground and watch God accelerate you. Come on, as you're preparing your offering, we're going to show a video. Amen. And we're going to come back to pray over your seed. Good morning, good morning, accelerators. I am Jarvis, and I will be bringing you the latest and greatest updates in less than 60 seconds right here at Acceleration Church with the Acceleration Minute. So we're so excited that our youth, they've had a long summer, they've had fun, and now they're getting ready to go back to school. So we want you to pray for our Acceleration Scholars as they go back to school. Up next, we're so excited about this awesome testimony that's coming from Ms. Kiomi Williams. She just passed her NCLEX nursing exams right before she did this uh, testimony. So we're gonna ask that you would lend your ear as she shared what God has done in her life. Hi, I'm Kiyomi and I've been in Accelerator for about five months. I joined back in May of 2021 and it's been the best thing that I could have ever done. Joining this church has reformed my mind. It has renewed me. Um, I, I can now conquer anything. I feel like through the teachings and the word of God, that I can now conquer anything. I joined when I was probably in the worst spot with nursing school. It was something that scared me, but I just decided to go ahead and do it. Um, and, I and I started to do an accelerated program. Um, I got a bachelor's in one year. So things were crazy and I was getting to the point where I felt like I couldn't do it anymore. Like I bitten off more than I could chew. And just from coming to service every Sunday and doing midweeks with Pastor Tekoa, I was just taught that I can do it through prayer and believing in myself that I was able to do anything that I set my mind to. And it was that I had to renew my mind and take God along on this journey with me. I, I questioned every point, every aspect of this program, um, but God has been right there with me throughout this entire thing. I joke often with my family saying that my degree should have my name on it and God's name on it because that's how I got it. Um, I have just been tremendously blessed through this ministry and I can't wait to see what I can do to be a blessing to this ministry. And if I had to tell you all one encouraging thing, I would just say, whatever you feel passionate about, whatever you feel that you know that you are meant to do on this earth, bring God along the, on that journey. And I promise you, he will take care of you. I'm a living witness that if you involve God and you give him back that glory and you let people know that it was nobody but him, he will put you in places that you can't even imagine. I'm a living witness and I'm excited. Like she's blessed up. Y'all blessed up? Hey. Come on, come on. Turn it up a little bit. Y'all know this is how we give our offer hey. with joy. I don't know about you, but hey. while Pastor was preaching, I already felt my automatic doors. So I named my seed, I put automatic doors open there for me. Hey. So I encourage you to do the same. This song say that we blessed up. That mean that we started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we Come on, say I've been blessed up, I've been broke down. Gotta catch up, gotta shine now. I'm running faster, I can't slow down. Gotta catch up, gotta shine now. Cause I've been blessed up. I've been broke down, gotta catch up, gotta shine now. I'm running faster, I can't slow down. I'm an accelerator, I'm an accelerator. I've been blessed up, I've been broke down. Gotta catch up, gotta shine now. Running faster, I can't slow down. Gotta catch up, gotta shine now. See, I've been blessed up, I've been broke down. Gotta catch up, gotta shine now. I'm running faster. I can't 
can't slow down. I'm an accelerator. I'm an accelerator. I'm an, I'm an accelerator. Come on, raise it up. If you know that you are an accelerator and your blessings are moving at an accelerated speed, come on and raise that thing up. Come on. I'm an accelerator. I'm an accelerator. I'm an accelerator. Yeah. I'm an accelerator. I'm an accelerator. I'm an accelerator. You an accelerator. I'm an accelerator. forthcoming for you. Amen. We have Bishop Donna Gobby that's going to kill it on Friday night. Free, open to the public. Listen, he going to preach the paint off the walls. If y'all have, who's heard Dr. Gobby before? Let me tell you, you don't want to miss it. Then on Saturday, our keynote speaker is Simon Bailey and Pastor Dio has went through his Rolodex. All of his friends that are millionaires, experts, they're going to be here from doctors to CEOs to experts in their field to give you top tier knowledge on how to grow in every area of your life. And then on Sunday, our very own Pastor Dio is going to preach the paint off the wall. Amen. God has given him this vision of acceleration and the anointing of acceleration. You don't want to miss If you are a member of Acceleration Church and you are an accelerator, you need to be here with five other people. You don't want to miss what God is going to speak and do in this conference. Amen. Amen. Also, Sheree, if you would come and just raise your hand right out the church. Our kids are going to be in the parking lot enjoying the games, the snow cones, the music. Let them have fun. While they're having fun, can we get some adults that will help our outreach director? We're stuffing bags. We're stuffing bags to take to Lockhart Middle School tomorrow. We're going to pray over the teachers. We're going to pray in that school, and we're going to hand every teacher a bag of goodies. So if we can get some volunteers to meet Cherie and Javon in the for you to stuff bags while our kids Kids are having fun, okay? Our security is out there. We got an eye on your kids. They're going to be fine. Lastly, 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 the most important thing, several of you raised your hand for salvation. Please do not leave without all of all of, come up and raise your hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. See all of in the for you. She has on pink. She has on pearls. I, she has something she's going to put in your hand that gives you scriptures, gives you information about your new walk with Christ. And then Pastor Dio and I, we want to pray with you. Amen. Amen. Are those all the announcements? All right, let's do our declaration. Let's have a great school year this year. We will see you back here Sunday at 10 a.m. Let's read our declaration. I am an accelerator. My blessings are moving at an accelerated speed. God is accelerating favor all around me. Be blessed. We love you. Hey, see, I've been blessed up. I've been broke down. Gotta catch up. Gotta shine now. We're running faster. I can slow down. Gotta catch up. Gotta shine now. See, I've been blessed up. I've been broke down. Gotta catch up. Gotta shine now. We're running faster. I can't slow down. I'm an accelerator. I'm an I'm an accelerator. 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 I'm an I'm an accelerator. I'm an accelerator. I'm an accelerator. I'm an accelerator. My blessings move. Hey, hey, hey.